today I'm going to try and persuade you through the use of a study that actually observed dry fasting conditions in zebra finches. We can look here and see some of these results and at a cursory glance we can see they've taken the averages and plotted them on a graph and we can see that just specifically mass of the birds we see that the control group obviously maintained their mass. It's fine. They were under completely normal conditions. You don't expect much there. The water fasting group lost a lot of weight. They dropped from almost 14 to maybe 13.4. Remember, these birds are very light. So one gram of difference is like 10% uh, of, a, of a difference. So in human terms, that would be like 10 to 20 pounds, which is crazy. But obviously, the dry fasting group lost the most weight. Um, and when we look at the water content, we see that the control group actually has slightly lower water content in the carcass. And that is wild because you would expect the fasting birds to actually have less water. Maybe the water fasting groups would have the most, which we actually see up here. We see that they actually have the highest water content but then we see the dry fasting birds are basically almost even with the control group and that is wild then when they looked at lean dry mass that was fantastic too we actually saw that the water fasting and dry fasting group basically lost the same amount of muscle and if you really wanted to nitpick it would actually seem that the dry fasting group lost less muscle than the water fasting group and then when we look at total body fat this is where things get ridiculous the water fasting group barely lost any weight after 24 hours, but the dry fasting gr group actually lost a tremendous amount of fat. And when we look at the actual fat loss later in the article, we'll talk about the actual numbers. As we come down here, here's the table that I put together. Uh, and you can take a look in the article to, to print it out or to see it better. But then I subdivided that into categories so that we can talk about it a little bit more and we have this weight loss and water content and we see that the final mass changes the most for the dry fasting group that's fine it doesn't tell us a lot but it correlates to all to our own dry fasting experiences and the idea that you lose a ton of weight, especially on the first 24 to 48 hours of a dry fast. So you can expect the scale to really plummet, but you also have to remember that a lot of it is water weight. However, this study has shown us that there is a lot of fat loss, even in just 24 hours happening during a dry fast. So that's something to take into consideration. And then obviously we see the water content is crazy because the birds actually had a higher water content while fasting than during a during regular conditions. And now as we go to fat burn, we start to see that um, there was a huge, huge discrepancy. It's amazing how much more fat was lost. So we have 26.9% more fat lost. And remember, that is the percentage of how much more was lost from dry fasting compared to water fasting. So actually, off of the control group, water fasting only lost about 1%, whereas dry fasting lost 28% of their total fat. So... Yes, I'm sure that zebra finches have a more efficient fat burning metabolism relative to their body size than we do. But just this idea paints a picture of how powerful a dry fast can be for fat loss. And just in terms of zebra finches, we see that in 24 hours, dry fasting burned almost 20 times the amount of fat than the water fasting group. What does this show us? Well, basically, we have to think about it in terms of ketosis. Ketosis is when the body's actually burning fat, so it creates ketones. We know this. That's the basis of the ketogenic diet and of all fasting. However, we also know that glycogen needs to be depleted, so you have to be in a nutrient starvation period for your glycogen to get used up by the body so that it actually starts to enter ketosis and burn fat. But to burn fat this quickly tells us that ketosis can occur through other means than just nutrient deprivation and here we're being shown that our bodies activate ketosis in dehydration as well as calorie restriction what does this mean that there are methods to autophagy 
that science hasn't even touched on. I, you, I hope you're as flabbergasted as I am just reading this because the revelations here are insane. We knew on an intrinsic level that this was true. That's why we drive fast. That's why you're a weirdo who loves this fast. And not just because it makes you feel better and have more energy, and we can explain that in science, but because you knew that these weird claims that weren't even really backed by science were fantastic, and you believed in the power of the dry fast. And here we have evidence to show why those beliefs were correct. And if you want to look into another video that I did, it's called The Science Behind How a One-Day Dry Fast is Equivalent to a Three-Day Water Fast in Raw Autophagic Power. That's a great article, and it talks about a completely different research paper that tracked autophagy levels in the brain on a dry fast, and it actually tracked it up to either day three or day four of a dry fast. Uh, it wasn't meant to be for dry fasting. It was just one of the extra conditions that the researchers uh, measured for, and it is a fantastic paper and also gives us more insight and science behind how dry fasting is so powerful. Now, lean mass. Lean mass is interesting. It's interesting because it is not interesting. <laughs> it's interesting because the results are almost the same. And you're going to say, oh, whatever. No, that's insane because we just looked at fat burn. So for the same amount of time, we lose the same amount of muscle, but burn infinitesimally more fat. Put that together and what do you get? You get something magical, especially for weight loss. And this is probably why my, pro not, not just my protocol, but a lot of other people talk about things like 36 hour dry fasts on a weekly, bi-weekly, maybe monthly basis for weight loss. You do not have to do these insane long dry fasts to have a very powerful weight loss protocol. You just need to learn how to dry fast for short bursts properly. And that type of efficiency is going to change your life. Okay, and one of the last categories that we're going to talk about here is metabolic water and energy expenditure. And here we see that the second column in all of these is the dry fasting group and the first one the dark one is the water fasting group and we can see that for example for uh, metabolic water production we can see that energy from protein is about the same and it, it makes sense energy from protein and water from protein is about the same because we know lean mass dropped at approximately the same rate so it makes sense that these numbers match and then what we know is the fat loss was where the huge discrepancy existed. And here we see where that energy and water is coming from, and it's coming from the fat. This correlates to a lot of things. How you feel better on a dry fast than a water fast. Why? Because your body is producing excess energy because it's burning the fat faster. So you have more energy. And energy is one of the main things that make you feel down, depressed, uh, going through the keto flu and a lot of other symptoms on a fast. And it's one of the main reasons why people quit and they feel like they can't fast. So the dry fast feels easier because it is because the body is giving you a surplus of energy it's crazy it's a huge fasting hack and then obviously we see where the water is coming from the excess water to keep us at a pretty good pace however i hope that you're not taking this information and thinking that you can dry fast forever it is a balance it is a scale we do slowly dehydrate as the days go by. So it gets more dangerous the deeper you go. And that's where you have to balance the safety and the dangers and the benefits and the risks. That's where all the nuance and all the dry fasting caveats come into play. And you really have to watch out. That's really the beauty and the intricacy of a dry fast. Okay. And now what are we on? Last thing, metabolic rate. This is kind of self-explanatory. When you fast, your metabolic rate slowly goes down. It's not super crazy. And on a water fast here, we can see that it went down about 6%. And on a dry fast, about 10.7, almost double the amount compared to the water fast. What does that mean? Well, our body is getting that complete rest. 
this starts to talk about things like a complete fast versus an incomplete fast and why people say that a dry fast is the ultimate fast because it allows your body to really rest. Believe it or not, ingesting water doesn't let your body fully rest the way it gets to shut down its digestive system on a dry fast. But with that, you have to watch out because as it shuts down the digestive system quicker, we see that the BMR, the metabolic rate, goes down faster as well. This is why refeeding is so critical, so important on a dry fast. You may think that even a one or two day dry fast is nothing and you can take almost no precautions and just eat whatever the hell you want, but nothing could be further from the truth. Even after a 36 hour dry fast, you should refeed carefully. Yes, you don't have to go as crazy as a super long dry fast. I talk about it as an accordion window. For example, if you use my Scorch protocol and I say, if you do a shorter fast, just imagine it as an accordion that gets squished. You still want to adhere to all of the principles, maybe in a smaller window, but you trust me, you'll be glad that you refeed correctly even after short dry fasts.